Like many of his countrymen, Abdul Omar runs a store. I sell uh, spaghetti, macaroni, some rice, um, just a good drink, fish and some gusas. I sell those kind of stuff, yeah. Despite owning his own takeaway business, he says life is tough in Cape Town and the ideal would be to return to his home country. When it comes you know, about you know, life in South Africa, the people are different. So some of the people that are very you know, complicated life here. Tens of thousands fled to South Africa over the last 21 years as civil war raged, while drought and famine ravaged the Horn of Africa. Since xenophobic violence swept through the Western Cape in 2008, Somali stores have been targeted sporadically, falling victim to looters. But future prospects for Abdul Omar and his countrymen improved in early September. The Somali community in Belleville watched in euphoria as it was announced on television that Hassan Sheikh Mohammed was elected president. 10 September, it's an unforgettable day for all the Somals everywhere that they are in the world. Everybody jumped to his car. Some people run out to the road. S celebration starts on the streets of Cape Town. Ahead of the election, we were watching on the TVs. Some of the TVs, we were just celebrating. We were hoping that things will come better. So, and so maybe you you will have a, a little time to a chance to get back to your country. We feel uh, really very exciting uh, what's going in our country now, and we are very very happy. Uh, our new president and we are very, you know, uh, interesting uh, what's going on about the election or whatever. So really, we the first we flee from the war and we like to go back our country as soon as possible. I like I like to go as soon as, soon as possible. There's no place better. Uh, I do believe uh, I should go back there because rather than all of us, we came here to see protection and uh, safety from the violence in Somalia. So if we get um, Somalia working with the government, actually, uh, we are we are some educated have been at the diaspora. We, we all turn back and work there. A member of the Somali Community Board says it's vital that all the skills attained by tens of thousands of Somalis living abroad are used to rebuild their homeland. We are so experienced in other countries now since we have been outside of the country for the last 25 years, some of us, and we have seen that fighting is not right. So I will tell the young people and uh, the people who are outside of the world to go back to Somalia and defend the way we have seen experience in other countries. Vanya Gastro is a WITS researcher who's been studying the plight of Somali shop owners in the Western Cape for two years. My impression is that Somalis from all clan backgrounds feel that he's an improvement on the previous president um, and they're more optimistic now than I've ever seen them before. Um, at the same time, I think that they're cautiously optimistic because electing this president doesn't, necess doesn't necessarily mean that the war in Somalia has now ended. Um, it seems like there's stability in Mogadishu, but there's still many other problems throughout the country. Gastro says it's important South Africa doesn't implement a knee-jerk change in its stance on asylum for Somalis. It's far too early to change any policy on um, Somali asylum seekers in South Africa. Um, at the moment, there's a change in presidents in Somalia, but it doesn't mean that the civil war has come to an end. Um, I think that in the short term, um, there, I think in the short term, there's not going to be any immediate change in Somalia. Um, if Home Affairs wishes to reconsider asylum applicants in South Africa, um, maybe it could do so in the, in the long term. I think it still needs to wait and see how all these political developments unravel. If it becomes security and everything right, you can go back there. My future. I see my future lies in my country. For those who do eventually return to Somalia, the occasion may be bittersweet as large parts of the capital and general infrastructure lie in ruins. Aleta Gardner, Eyewitness News, Cape Town. Eyewitness News. In touch, in tune and independent.